This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. This summer, there's no better meal than a freshly grilled burger. Today, this meal is iconically American and often a symbol of the spread of American culture abroad. But like most meals, this one can trace its origin over a millennia to the old school world power of Rome. So today we explore the ancient origin of the hamburger and fries and see how much it would cost to grow and make your own burger, including producing all of the tools myself. What we eat today comes from generations of trial and error, accidental discovery, and ever-expanding trade. We're exploring the origins and the history of some of our favorite foods of today, as well as the tools were invented along the way to make them. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. This past year has been difficult for everyone. I know I felt it with the extra isolation, the financial challenges, and just a whole lot of extra chaos in the world. Sometimes it just feels really overwhelming and you just need someone you can talk to. But there are options out there to help and get you assistance in as little as 48 hours. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not always be present locally in many areas. And the service is accessible worldwide. You can log in to your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely, and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly videos or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. It's a very affordable option compared to traditional counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash HTME, that's better H-E-L-P, and join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash HTME. The possible origin of these two dishes come from two recipes in one of the oldest cookbooks in the world, Apicius. A collection of Roman recipes is written sometime in the first century AD. In it is one of the first references to a minced meat patty. Then there's a recipe believed to be the origin of modern day french fries. Living in a world that has not yet gained access to the new world crops such as potatoes and tomatoes, these fries use a different root starch called parsnips. And without tomato to make the ketchup sauce, in its place they use a sauce made from wine and garum, which is itself made from fermented fish. So let's get this started. First by forging some new kitchen tools, we'll need to make our burger. Using the new anvil we just forged in our last video. First up, we're gonna need a good sized meat cleaver to mince our meat. Next, an upgrade to our campfire cooking. In place of the ceramics we've been using before to cook directly on the fire and hot coals, which resulted in a lot of breakage and headache, let's forge a grill, mostly composed of a bunch of stock rods with some loops. Next, a spatula. A little bit of an upgrade to the chopsticks we've been using to cook with so far. Thank you. 
Now let's begin the gathering of ingredients. First, for the bread of our hamburger bun, let's grow an ancient historical grain grown and commonly eaten during the Roman era, spelt. Garden. All right, so at the community garden plot and have a few different grains growing here. These guys are more ancient grain called spelt. This is what uh, the Romans would have eaten. Just about ripe, but not quite. In the same garden, I also grew a root crop known as parsnips. But they, however, have a slightly different harvest cycle. So it's March right now, and I'm back at the community garden. Winter has passed and pretty much everything is dead. This will be the last time I'm at this garden. I've given it up, but I have one last crop to harvest before I give it up, and that's my parsnips. So they've been left in the ground over the winter, and supposedly, according to the Romans, this was the best way to harvest them to get the sweetest result. The parsnips are apparently still green. Let's see if I can dig them up, and uh, maybe we can make some fries. There's another one. Pretty good. There we go. Ooh, that's a long one. It's time to make some parsnip fries. Using the cleaver Andy made, give these bad boys a chop. Gotta use safe chopping methods. So, beautiful. Gonna start making fry shapes. Hey, yeah. Ooh, yum. There we go. Oh, that's the guy. Time to grind some spelt to make flour. The good burger, home of the good burger. Can I take your order? Now to bake the bread. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cob oven we previously built in our bread episode has fallen upon a bit of disrepair. And after a visit from our official building inspector, it was condemned. So let's use the brand new pottery kiln and glass furnace we built, but this time using the suggestion a few people gave of removing the fire after we heat it up and baking the bread from the residual heat. All right, now for the main course, the actual burger itself. In the ancient Roman recipe, they don't actually specify what type of meat you're supposed to use. So it could be a, a variety of different ones. Most likely it's pork, possibly beef. So I'm gonna do both. First, we gotta mince it. So we have our cleaver. Let's start mincing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> As we're getting some stoned in there. For some additional seasoning, in my new garden I've planted a variety of herbs for all of our upcoming projects. Give me a little bit more time in my hands. 
For the oil, we have olives we collected and then pressed in the oil press we built. Right next to the olives, we also found a variety of peppercorn for some seasoning. We also have some pine nuts we previously collected and used for another Roman dish, moratum. Then one last ingredient I collected while in the deserts of Utah, juniper berries. All right, now for some extra flavor to the burger. We have uh, a few different things. We have our pink peppercorn from California. We got the pine nuts we originally gathered in a pesto episode, a variety of herbs, and then we have some juniper berries. So we're gonna grind them up in the modern pesto and mix them in with the meat. Also mix in some of the spelt flour. A little bit of the fermented garum sauce. And some of our wine. This is called cull fat, fat that lines organs. Trademark of the recipe is that you wrap the burgers in this. So, we're gonna do that. <laughs> you wanna chew on that a little bit? I'm pretty full. <laughs> First up, frying the parsnips in our olive oil. A little bit more. Oh. Maybe I should have stuck with the chopsticks. All right, they're looking pretty good. Very classic burger look to them. I think the call kind of helps hold it together. Oh, f f <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that extra flavor in there. Movable tines are not super great. All right, touch of charcoal and ash really seals the deal. The ingredients for the sauce of the fries is made of wine and garum. That's a lot. Do you love it? I don't hate it but I also don't like it. Two ingredients we've previously made in past episodes. The wine, fermented from hand-harvested grapes, and the garum, from fish we had caught and then fermented into a fish sauce. Mixed together, they are reduced over the fire into our sauce. Here we have our completed Roman era burger. Mmm, mm, that is really good. Wow, fresh bread is really nice. The call on the outside of it is a little weird. I keep thinking it's mozzarella, <laughs> but it's not. It makes it a little chewy, a little hard to bite into, but I think it really kind of added an extra bit to it. I'm gonna try fries. Parsnips that are fried, they're still fries. And then we have the reduced Wine with garum as a ketchup. That's really good. They're surprisingly sweet. I was a little skeptical about the garum. Never really turned out too great. Hmm. I think with the reduced red wine, the sauce is actually pretty good. It's not tomatoey, but it, it has the essence of ketchup. I'm uh, rather surprised. This turned out really well. So I guess if you're like really craving a burger and fries and you're back in Rome, you could actually order one and it would be pretty good. Try some more of this. Definitely a bit chewy, I think, from it being so coarsely chopped. I think that coal is like the biggest difference to it. it gives it a weird texture. It's very chewy, but I like it. Let's try the pork one now. Mm. 
That's also really good. Chew's a little bit easier. Did a better job mincing this one, mostly because it had less fat than the, the fatty steak. Still really tasty. Just uh, a pork alternative. Oh, that was a very tasty meal. All right, so I think I would consider that a massive success. This turned out a lot better than I expected. I think I would uh, not be too upset if I got brought back to Rome and was craving a burger. So how much does it cost to make a burger yourself if you manufacture all of your own tools, grow all your own grain and vegetables, and collect a variety of seasoning ingredients? Well, altogether, this came together at around 35 hours of labor. That comes up to a mere $435 for this burger and fries. And thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without you, this won't be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.